Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, with a dash of garden, chatting about current interests, and life in my northern town. You can find show notes at mycreativecorner3.com. You can also find all of my social media, how to purchase a virtual cup of coffee, and all events on the website. Please feel free to stop by and leave a comment. I really appreciate everyone who listens. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to My Creative Corner 3. April is here. I know. Can you believe it? It's probably spring where you're at. But up until mm, a couple days ago, we've been having sleet and snow and gray and very strong winds. But something happened yesterday. Woke me straight up out of bed about four o'clock in the morning was a very loud thunderstorm and the spring winds. Some places did get uh, tornado watches and I know some places in the nation did get tornadoes and I really feel bad for those communities because we went through that last year and my heart goes out to them. So if you were impacted by that, I'm really sorry and will be thinking of those communities. Well, signs of spring are here. We had so much rain yesterday. It did not snow at all. It was hovering in the 30s. It warmed right up to the 50s. And we've had a couple of days like that. Most of the snow in my yard has melted. Yes, did you hear that? Signs of spring, it melted. However, the snow banks... They are not melted. So on the side of the yard where we have to blow snow, it, there's a ridge of a snowbank and snow mountain at the back of the property because my property butts up to the private school's parking lot. They had so much snow. It is so deep and so tall. They never hauled it away like they normally do. And it's not um, a snow mountain anymore. It's an iceberg. It looks like a massive iceberg that has melted down into one solid piece of ice. (laughs) Can't believe it. It's so solid. But the good news is that my garden is exposed. I am so excited. So that means the snow will be rapidly melting off of my property. And the snow mountain is mostly on the other side of the property line. There was a lot of snow though from Snow Mountain that does kind of inch up to the property. I was really worried with Sharina who asked online that when Snow Mountain melts, will it go into my yard and flood? Well, it could, and that was a big worry, but it seems like there is a drain in the corner of the parking lot. And if the snow melts, into their property, it should drain to the city drain system. And so far that seems to be working. The yard in our soil is very sandy. Um, We've put improvements into the garden area over time with, you know, black dirt and peat and not peat, compost from the city compost pile. So that garden area has good soil on the top, but it's very sandy underneath. So generally, we don't have flooding here with all of the snow as it melts. However, downstate in West Michigan and in some other places, they got so much rain, the ground was saturated from all of the winter rains and snows. They did have a little bit of flooding, but I haven't seen that it's been widespread. So signs of spring, birds are singing early in the morning. The sun is rising earlier and earlier. I'm seeing pairs of birds and not in my backyard, but when we've been traveling to see family, I've seen robins making nests. I've seen other birds pairing up 
and singing their songs of love every spring. So this has been a month where i am really been focusing. March was on gratitude with my Silk and Sounder journal, which has really been helpful to think of gratitude every day, but to make it as a month long focus, you know, kind of like Thanksgiving, but yet gratitude, I think is a little bit different. And this month is vibrance, which I like because vibrance really connects with the renewal of the earth here that we're having here with the signs of spring. So I'm looking for vibrance, things that bring me excitement, joy, energy, and renewal. And I'll have to say, I have found that in the things that always comfort me and are my go-to things. Quilting is one. So what have I been doing in the quilting world? Well, I have been keeping up right along with the spools. So along that is from the So Scrappy Spools Pattern by Lori Holt. It is something that is going on in the background at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, Kim- Kimberly Jolly's not doing that particular one, but it is going through their blogs and people are posting their So Scrappy Spools on Instagram with the hashtag. So I have not done April's blocks yet, but they are look adorable. They look like tulips and there's another block can't draw it up right now. But I'm really liking it because even though they're five and a half inch blocks, it is not like the Dear Jane, which is a nightmare, like everything being such a jigsaw puzzle that my brain is not ready to pick it back up yet. I have been able to follow these patterns quite well, and I have been able to keep up. So, so scrappy spools, it's a year long. It's still not too late. If you want to jump in, you could catch right up, purchase the PDF, or I think is now and also a paper pattern that you could have an instant download with the PDF version um, and be able to catch right up. Lori Holt's patterns, I can't say um, enough good things about them. They're easy, they're larger, so you can read them. The directions make sense. Every once in a while, you know, you'll hit a technique you don't like, but if you've been quilting long enough, you might be able to figure out an alternate way to do it. So I'm loving stash busting with So Scrappy Spools. And I, in my stash, there's a couple larger pieces and I did find that real pretty brown and it's coming along well. You're not going to believe it, but also I've been keeping up with Socialites too. There are 22 blocks done now, which means we only have two left. This is a great pattern. Um, Each week is different. And this week's pattern is lovely. It's called the Twisted Ohio Star. It looks extremely complicated and it went together for me so easily. Now, why? I don't know. Maybe my brain has been rehabbing well doing social lights too. If you um, don't know or you're new here, I had COVID last summer and we're, let's see, the end of May will be when I caught it the first time. I had it like back to back, two infections or one big long one. We don't know. And I have had long COVID. So I've been doing social lights too, as a way to relearn my sewing skills. And every week is a new technique. And the Fat Quarter Shop has a tutorial on Fridays. And Kimberly does a great job. And I really learned a lot. And I feel like my skills are back. And reading patterns has come along. I have not decided on the final pattern, but I'm leaning toward the Threadology, which is a free layout um, on Fat Quarter Shop. And I'm pretty sure that's the way I'm going to go. And then I couldn't help it. I just started doing a scrappy quilt from the book Scrappiness is Happiness by Lori Holt. And I'm doing Criss Cross Stars. So I took a page out of Lori Holt's book in using a background that's a pretty bright color. And I found a big yardage of yellow. It's a solid yellow and it's a really bright, probably not real dark, more of a mid-tone yellow. 
And I'm trying to stick to those same mid-tones in scraps. I have a couple of misses on my scraps and I just won't use that fabric again later. But what's brilliant about Criss Cross Stars is that it is a half square triangle for the points. And then you make another half square triangle in the way that Lori explains and there's no matching up of except you know, your nine patch seams. It's based in a nine patch layout. And it's not wonky stars. They're all the same size points. All the points are far enough away from the edge of the block. I mean, I really like it. They're larger pieces so I can use larger prints. It has been a lot of fun trying to fussy cut the center or find um, really bold fabrics for the center of these stars. And um, I highly recommend Crisscross Stars. You can find on um, Sew Your Stash series for the tutorial on Lori Holt's YouTube. It's called, I think Lori Holt. Anyway, if you Google Lori Holt, her blog is um, B, B Lori, I think. And her Instagram handle, if you want to um, see all of her links, it's B Lori One. So love the crisscross stars. And I have enough of this, I think, to make it probably a wall hanging or maybe even the lap size quilt. And if I get going on it and I run out of yellow I'm thinking well who says that all of the background has to be the same color there's no sashing in this quilt but it could be fun to have a couple of other solid colors as the background sprinkled in who knows we'll see how far the yellow goes though now the other thing that I did was one of the home again which is a Lori Holt pattern and the thing about that is an 18 inch block now I have I have gotten um, a big pack of gifts to preview from the Fat Quarter Shop. And this pattern was in it. What I really like about it is that it's a two color quilt and it's large. I made one, but I am thinking instead of making a whole series of them and putting them together in the rainbow color quilt, this week Fat Quarter Shop did a tutorial on making an envelope style toss pillow with an 18 inch form or a 20 inch form. So I like that idea so much that everyone in my family may be getting a 18 inch toss pillow for Christmas. <laughs> but I will say this is the one Lori Holt pattern. I do not like her um, flying geese. It is a kind of a a weird way to do it and I don't like making the four at a time flying geese so it is a star and I will probably modify that in the way I do it so that's one um, thing I'll just tell you if you don't like doing four at a time flying geese you'll that pattern you'll just have to to know that you may have to put an alternate method in there so that's really all of the sewing I have been doing. Now there's another um, quilt along going on and it's just serendipitous, but it's called the Vintage Kite Papers. It's a pad that it's so Emma prints, which is a Fat Quarter Shop brand. And um, it's called Vintage Kite. And I had a vintage qu kite quilt that my friend made. And I am long arming it. I'm doing a row at a time. What I really like is I'm doing swirls in the white background, which is, I think, an octagon shape. And then the kites are elongated diamonds. And I'm doing like a four petals that come together in the kite pieces. You know, each kite has one petal. And then I'm doing swirl flowers with a swirl in the center one great big swirl flower in the octagons. It's really, really pretty the way this quilt comes together. And I'll have to tell you that my long arm machine goes through it really well because when all those pie pieces come together to form the octagon in the background, it can get lumpy, but I'm telling you, baby lock long arms 
go right through it. No problem. And then I'm using Blizzard White Thread, which is like an ultra white from So Fine, which is a superior thread on a very, very ultra white background with 1930s vintage looking prints. Now, my friend is a great scrap quilter and she's picked some more modern um, fabrics to go with it. But man, it's just really a beautiful quilt. And it looks old, but it's put together um, with foundation paper piecing. So you could buy it from Fat Quarter Shop. They have a great tutorial with that as well. Their stuff is so good. I mean, I'm kind of like finding I don't even go to my local quilt shop much because everything I could possibly want is at Fat Quarter Shop. The other thing that I'm finding um, that I'm easily doing in the evening is handwork is cross stitch. And I finished the first tea time stitch along and we're using the X stitch the rainbow. It's a promotion that was on Instagram and the company is Trendway Silks and it's silk embroidery floss. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So I did the first one is the top knot notch and it's top knot is the name of the pattern maker top knot cross stitch and the top notch cup of tea and it's really cute it's a teacup with a lot of steam coming out the top on three stacked books i'm omitting the frame i'm not exactly sure what i'm going to do with it now that it's all stitched and um all of the patterns for this tea time stitch along are all this it's a burgundy a sage like green and a pink and a silvery multicolor and they really go together well and have the theme of tea time so this it's probably a four inch the, the other thing is all of these patterns are 60 count across and 60 stitches down so three four six inches depending on what type of fabric you're using and I'm using the scraps of Ada cloth that I have so the next in this series is the moon time tea that I started on black I decided you know what it does not spark joy no I do not like stitching on black cloth so I'm going I saw somebody else do this on Instagram and they did that same moon time tea on a light background and that's what I'm going to do. I have a lot of white and off white that would look great. So the fabric I use for this Ada on the Tea Time top knot stitcher, it's a mottled kind of cream and white and it looks great with the steamy um, stitches coming off the top. So it kind of has that coffee stained look but I, I like it that the white comes through enough and it caught, it had enough contrast with the silvery stitches on, on that. You know what? I just got thinking, I noticed the other day, I might have one more row to stitch in the pages of the book. I better, I better go fish that out of my fully stitched bin and double check it. I just had that pop into my mind. <laughs> And I'm still stitching on the temperature quilt using um, DMC thread that came in a pack, a thread pack from Fat Quarter Shop for Candy Hearts. And it's a nice wide range of colors and I'm excited because the weather's warmed up. You remember the intro. Um, and I'll be moving on to more of the different shades. I'm doing greens and yellows mostly now because that's zero to about 45 and when we start getting to 45 and 50s it will be blues so I'm pretty excited. Now the other um, gift that came in the bundle of things that Fat Quarter Shop sent me is Summer Memories. It's a book by Susan Aki and it's a, got quilt patterns as well as cross stitch patterns. So let me read the synopsis here in the um, information that came from It's So Emma's Fat Quarter Shop. Summer Memories is a book by Susan Aki. 
Reminisce over old memories with these wonderful quilts and cross stitch pieces by Susan Aki. Her book includes 16 traditional projects that traverse whole albums of family times. It's inspired by summer memories of family reunions in her childhood. Each project reflects her favorite parts of those days. Clear waters for fishing and swimming with cousins, colorful visit to farmer's markets and her grandma, as well as having plenty of fun in the sun for all. The quilts are great for one color wonders as well as stash friendly sewing. And the cross stitches are imbued with inspirational art and sampler text. Each quilt and cross stitch have a summer story to tell, and Susan invites you to recreate and share your own summer memories with these resplendent designs. Now, she has most of the quilts covered, colored in a medium red, medium blue, and white. So they have kind of this summer red, white, and blue patriotic 4th of July feel, but they're beautiful and they would be great as stash busters. But I'm going to do several of the cross stitches and the stitch along is in June. So summer Aki, summer Aki, Susan Aki, summer memories. How's that? Um, would be a great book if you want to do any of those. Now let's see. It is $12 or $24 and 95 cents is the MSRP on that particular book, but it has um, just as many stitch patterns as there are quilt patterns. So it's, it's packed with quite a few lovely, lovely, both cross stitch and quilt. So that's on my list of things to do. So, well, I thought I would kind of end with, it's going to be a short podcast today, I think, because I'm going on vacation next week and I wanted to update you on some of the things that I've been doing and I'll let you know that, yeah, I'm going to see the grandkids for a couple days on spring break and we're hoping to drive through the Smoky Mountains on the way home, maybe on the Blue Ridge Parkway, maybe through uh, Skyline Drive in the Shenandoah, I think it's a state park. Yeah, Shenandoah Valley. No, I think it's a national park. Well, I will learn more all about it on the trip and we'll tell you about it when we get home. So my whole um, thoughts about this whole spring break trip is just visiting um, my family in Virginia and enjoying their company. It will be a few days there and a few days on the road because we're taking an epic road trip. We have gone to Costco and we are trying to do this trip on a budget and um, versus stopping and buying all the expensive snacks and water. We bought lots of snacks and water for the car. So we've got nuts and uh, crackers and well, what else did I buy? Oh, protein bars and mini muffins and things that are, that'll be great. And we can share them with the kids. We also need to stop at the chocolate house tomorrow before we leave. I'll send them a list with my husband, you know, to buy things like chocolate covered potato chips, truffles, and maybe a couple Easter bunnies to take. I am so loving so many things that I am seeing on the internet. And I thought that's what I would end with this week. One of the things that I did was in person and we took a trip to Ikea and I was super duper inspired. I didn't buy a ton of like furniture or things. I do like Ikea furniture and I need a new couch. Love seat. Um, we don't use the love seat tons, but they had some really cute ones that had like um, loungers on the end. I really liked those. They were small and would fit in my tiny little ancient 100 year old house. So that would be a good thing to have. I was inspired that all of their spring line was botanical themed. So they had a lot of 
you know, fake plants to put in your house. Not every plant of mine has made it. I just threw two more away. So I've lost about four plants this winter. And um, they have some great things like I can't grow things in my house like a Boston fern. So I bought a couple of Boston fern um, silk plants. Doesn't that make them sound fancy? And I'm going to place them around parts of my house that are very dark and doesn't grow plants, but you need a little, little punch of um, plant life. They, I bought a new French press. Um, what else did I buy? Oh, a doormat and some Ikea chocolates because I like them so much. And just a few things like that for around the house. And I was very inspired by their organization systems and how they always use vertical space. And, you know, there's always things that you're trying to come up with a better solution when you live in a hundred year old home. You've got more vertical space than you do f footprint. <laughs> so, um, even though I've been organizing and I have been downsizing and trying to continue my role um, on the role of the winter great declutter of the sewing room, I still have other places in my house that I want to keep moving it along. And I need, I would really, I need, I would like another Calyx system, which is staple at Ikea, which is a cube system that you can put little baskets in as drawers and, or you can put drawers in them. They, they hold a lot. Love, love, love them. So what am I seeing on Instagram that I like? Been kind of hooked into the reels on Instagram and not on TikTok as much, but I still do love the TikTok. <laughs> I just do. I'm sorry. It's it's pretty fun. So I like a, an account that's called Quilt Coach Chick. So Quilt Coach Chick has some great um, shorts on how she does free motion quilting. She also has a YouTube channel that I have not watched, but I just found that out today when I was doing a little background of trying to find her name. Um, but I've long armed long enough that these are great, fresh ideas on doing new free motion quilting. And, you know, you can take classes from her and she has a beautiful, beautiful feed. But the one that I saw this week that really caught my eye is that she took a strip of fabric that was left over from the edge of her quilts and made it into a beautiful runner with half sunflowers and filled these half sunflowers with beautiful um, pebbling and swirls. And then she filled out the negative space with beautiful echoing quilting and love it. So it was a great video for the short and she did, did or does, did this particular um, stitch and how to, I think, on her YouTube video. She's got some other great ideas showing how she free motion quilts in samplers and actual quilts that she's doing for other people. And I have found them to be very inspiring and helping my brain wrap around some of the things that I used to be able to do on a long arm, but I haven't in a long time. And in a year or more, it feels like forever, even though it's only been a year, but just trying to remember how I did it was, yeah. So this has been very helpful. So has Leah Day. So Quilt Coach Chick is um, a great shorts feed if you want to see it on Instagram or YouTube and she also has longer version YouTube videos and Leah Day is back on Instagram and Facebook and she is one of the what I want to say OG of uh, free motion quilting when she was a baby you know a very young lady she had daily uh, 365 days of free motion um, 
free motion quilting project, which really got my brain flying on free motion quilting when I got a long arm. So she's back to doing some great reels and other videos of her free motion quilting. She does hers sitting down, so you could do it on a domestic machine as well as other types of long arms. But it doesn't matter what kind of quilting machine you're using because you can follow the same type of layout. And what was really cute is that she took a lot of her samples that she's making and made a cube out of them, like a stuffed animal or a toy, or you could make it into about anything you want. It's about the size of a Kleenex box. Interesting. So anyway, Leah Day, she's got some great things and she's got a baby and she puts cute pictures of the baby on there. And another account, which I am loving, and if I ever have free time and extra money to take a class, it's by Karen Elaine Creative. She also has a YouTube channel, but what caught my eye is her watercolor and doodles. I, you remember last year, I was like all over doing watercolors and doodles. And she shows lots of ideas, lots of um, things that I would like to try my hand at. But she is part of something that I think is very cool, is making collages. And what she's been doing is making what they call fodder, collage fodder, like little tiny watercolor leaves. And then she cuts them out after she doodles on them. And you can do a multimedia um, collage or art journal or even a simple thing for framing. You know, I mean, there's just really, really stirred this creative process in my mind. Another thing that I liked is she does some hand lettering, which I was really getting into that at the beginning of the pandemic and I was doing an art journal. And so one thing that she did is took some of these little tiny watercolors that she had cut out in either leaves or circles. She painted um, color blocks on watercolors. And in the negative space, she wrote things such as the knowledge of all things is possible or creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. Oh, I love that. See, that would be great for like making an art journal. And she did it as a multimedia types of process. The doors are for people. Doors are for people with no imagination. Derek Landry said that. I love that. So anyway, if you're interested at all in watercolors or doodling or zentangle or making junk journals she does i don't wouldn't call it junk journals she call i would call it multimedia art journals or tiny little art trading cards artist trading cards so i've got all of this stuff in my drawer and i just needed someone to show me how to do it and i think even just looking at her feed I could do it. The class for the, um, it's called the fodder class, um, collage fodder, water, watercolor collage fodder. Those classes, I looked them up and they're like, um, $200 for 20 classes by different teachers. So that's another one day when I have time and extra cash only. I will take a class, but I think I, I think I can do some of the things that she's doing and follow the hashtag and you'll see enough to just dive into the deep end of the pool. I think it would be awesome. But she did remember when I did, um, the background of watercolor, just a few swipes with a different color and made a whole page of them and then doodled leaves and things on top. She did that and I, I made mine into stickers and I want to make some more of those and make stickers. It'd be great for the collage. I, I haven't done collages in a long time. They're very therapeutic and they're, they really are uh, creative um, 
jumpstart. Wow, that reminds me, today's Thursday and I haven't done it yet. I have been doing a weekly creative jumpstart, a creative exercise or challenge, if you will, on the My Creative Corner 3 Facebook page. So last week was the 30 circles exercise. Um, I haven't seen anybody else post any pictures of their 30 circles. Um, I took all day to fill out the 30 circles. I wasn't going to time pressure me. And today I'm going to post, um, it's Thursday. So I'm going to post before the end of the day, the challenge. And um, if you want to participate, join the group, My Creative Corner 3. It's a Facebook group. And we will do a weekly on Thursdays creative challenge, unless I forget, you know, <laughs> I had it all in my mind yesterday and I forgot to do it today. So have a most wonderful week. I'll probably be back in a couple of weeks with an update on all the things um, we were able to do or not do, depending on the weather, um, how our road trip vacation went. It's always exciting when you take a road trip because you never know what's going to happen. And I hope that you take time to do creative things that bring you a vibrance to your energy and make you feel all excited and renewed for the spring. Um, and just know that baking things and being creative is very essential for most people to find balance and that creative flow state zen state has been very helpful for me especially as I'm getting to the other side of healing from long COVID and anyone who's had any cognitive um, disruptions from illness um, knows it's a long long road and I feel like, you know, I'm not 100% there, but I'm getting there. And making things has been part of it. It's also been helpful in keeping my eye on improvements as well as where I want to go with this. So have time every day to create something. Take a few deep breaths as you make it to relax and have a most wonderful week. I would love to hear what you're working on either in the group or you can see the show notes on my website, mycreativecorner3.com. Leave a comment and you can tell me all about what you're working on. And I'm always asked, um, how can I support the podcast? You don't have to purchase anything, but some people like to purchase a virtual cup of coffee for me and can do that through a link on my website, but it's also on Kofi, ko-fi.com. And just like, comment, share, let me know what you're up to. Share with your friends. It's a great way to support the podcast and it doesn't cost anything except maybe a few minutes of your time. I really appreciate everyone who comments, who gets with me um, in conversations on the blog as well as the Facebook group. And I hope that you all have a most blessed Easter weekend and we're having our spring break. I sure hope that you have signs of spring where you're at. Have a most wonderful day and quilt on everyone. <laughs>